Today, today we have tuned in to the science of sound. Hello. <laughs> Do you actually know how you make those sounds? Not physically, no. I mean, I know that I spent a lot of time practicing them, <laughs> but I don't know what flaps together to make the sound. <laughs> He may not know the science behind it, but to create his sound, he relies on resonance. To understand how... <laughs> you feel the heat! We're firing up a strange experiment. This is called a Rubens tube. So it isn't that dissimilar to a gas burner in your barbecue. Yeah. Big long pipe, little holes. I've got propane going in, but the slight difference is closed at the other end, there's a speaker at this end. So uh, we've brought along a human orchestra <laughs> so that we can put a whole heap of different frequencies and see what sort of visualisation of the sound we can get. So you want to have a Let's go with, with your vocal cords sure. and this. Wow. When Tom hits Very a close. specific note, look at what happens. The flames form peaks. This is because the sound waves are resonating inside the tube. So talk to me about resonance. What does that actually mean? So the thing is, if you kind of send one pulse up, it hits the end and it reflects back. Imagine what would happen is if, while the other one's still travelling up, you sent a second pulse along. So there's all these pulses. And there's all these pulses. And then if the timing is just right, if the frequency is just right, as that pulse travels back, it meets up with the one coming forwards in the middle. You can see what's happening in this transparent tube. The peaks are where sound waves are colliding with themselves. Resonance in action. And it has the remarkable effect of making a sound louder. So the resonance, does it have to do with this particular instrument or is resonance something that everything is capable of? So, so lots of things are capable of it. The, the volume and the geometry and the materials all matter. So this might remind you of something like a didgeridoo or a, or a bassoon or you know, an instrument that is just a long tube. Um, and the length of that tube is important. So the tube likes to vibrate the air in it at those frequencies and multiples of those frequencies. Yeah, and you can, you can hear it like bouncing in rooms as well. You can find the resonant frequencies in scales and you'll hear it like buzz. It sounds fuller in your ears and it feels heavier almost. Like you can pinpoint the exact note and, and it, it, it's really pleasant to sing. <laughs> Each of us has our own built-in resonator in our throats. And we're about to get a look at Tom's. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> to do it, I've enlisted the help of ear, nose and throat specialist, Matthew Broadhurst. OK, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Now, this does require putting a camera or laryngoscope down Tom's nose. Oh, look at all those blood vessels. So hold on to your dinners. First thing it shows is that there's nothing unusual about Tom's vocal equipment. That's now down into the throat. Oh, wow. At the back of his throat, we see the light coloured vocal cords. G'day, mate. <laughs> that is the weirdest greeting I have ever received. To make the basic sounds, the vocal cords vibrate at hundreds of times per second. Oh, wow. So the vocal cords here, their job is to start the air from the lungs vibrating. As soon as they start vibrating, then from above that is everything that gives Tom all those sounds. Oh. Yeah, so what you can see is all the parts of what we call the hypopharynx and the pharynx pulling and contracting to change that vibrating air column. It's got the densest wiring outside of the brain of any part of the human body. And it's no wonder that it can do what Tom's showing it to do. Tom resonates those vibrations by changing the shape of his vocal tract.
and in terms of the chambers that are actually resonating. That's the, the bits on the top that are slightly red and knobbly. They're the arytenoids and the corniculate cartilages. And they're the things that Tom's able to move and contort unbelievably to give like those Like above sounds. average, right? Well above average. I, I've tried. I can't get close. <laughs> Wow, that's terrifying. You're pretty intimate with your own vocal, like, you know, use this every single day, you compulsively make sounds. Yeah. But what's it like actually seeing that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fascinating for me because you think of your voice as just the folds. You know, there's so much micro movement of certain things interacting that, that allow me to make sounds that it's something you don't really realise until you're literally rip the hood off and get deep up in there. <laughs> Without resonance, Tom couldn't make his voice heard. <laughs> and all sorts of materials, like this cladney plate, can resonate too. With some interesting results. Wow. Look at the line. It's beautiful. Wow. It's so crispy. So, let's see him put it all together as he exploits the physics of sound. He's using frequency and resonance to rock the shit. Get the mad beat from catching Dave. Got me locked in a page in a bat for days and it taps a vein. So I'm never gonna know when a venom gonna flow when attack my brain. But my flow produces psychos and proof of life shows and a rap insane. And I've overloaded my frontal lobe and I'm slump comatose and I'm acting strange. Drunk in the range, bitters of the gum for the gum for the pain. If you come to the show, we come to blows and my flow with no punches to punch the nose. Hold back in the act, man, bunches. Put them on the map and attract the compass. Imagine now, I got direction, right in the lag and dive when I connect the mic. I can take it back to the boom, back silent and move the whole room to the boom, get vine and deliver the opinion, make it vivid to give the listener any bit of a bomb, strong images. Never be gone, be gone, limitless. Imminent bomb, the bomb villages. Insidious seed in your syllabus. Tom's feeling this, you're feeling this. Yeah. 